very glad to welcome all of you here to the Pragna Equality Colloquium series. It is definitely a great evening that we all are here to hear our powerful speaker talk about sexual and gender-based violence and caste. The Pragna Equality Colloquium series we introduced this year actually. Uh, this is our third session of the series. Um, so we felt like um, uh, I mean, we, though we have various uh, discussion on gender and caste in our programs, we realize that there is a need to talk about the issue around caste and gender very systematically. Uh, so that's what we thought like, you know, this, uh, this, this series, lecture series will help. And we hope like this will provide a great platform to discuss, reflect, learn, unlearn around the issue. We are pleased to curate this lecture series on different dimensions of caste and gender on all Fridays in the month of April. And we hope to make this an annual April activity with your support. So there is a special um, note attached to this uh, that we want to curate this session uh, during the month of um, uh, like uh, Ambedkar Jayanti, which is April, which falls on every year. So before I introduce the speaker, I want to inform you that the lecture will be for 45 minutes and followed with the question and answer session for half an hour. I request the participant to enter the questions now and then in the chat, the speaker will answer your questions at the end of the session. So with that note, I want to introduce the speaker of our uh, third lecture of the series, uh, Ms. Shalin Maria Lawrence. Um, I remember when I called Shalin for the first time uh, last year during our campaign year. Uh, so to speak, uh, I mean, I want to invite her to speak in a panel discussion. Um, she was very welcoming. I did not even feel like I spoke to her for the first time. And she's a very friendly person and she makes me feel this every time I talk to her. This is my very, very personal experience with her. But then I want to elaborate her uh, social profile to you. Um, Shalin is a social activist, intersectional feminist, feminist uh, writer and orator. She has published two books in Tamil in the year 2018. She is also a regular writer in popular Tamil magazines and social issues. Currently, she is uh, writing a series. I think many of you know about this. Uh, writing a series in Tamil. Angalin uh, Manadai Punbudatam Pakkangal. This is in Kumudam Weekly. Uh, this is currently she started this. I think this last day, last week, I think she started uh, this series. Uh, so belongs to the oppressed community. She has been working towards the empowerment of Dalit women and the LGBTQ plus commu community since 2012. She has worked with a transgender right, rights organization and won the Days of, Day of Compassion Award from the Jane Goodall Foundation. She has been working with the Dalit communities in the North Madras region, especially in and around Vyasar Padi, where she has uh, helped in set, setting up the libraries conducting campaigns. So we will start to No, I want to elaborate yours because everybody should know about you. So that is the thing. Towards education and child rights from 2015. Maybe for you it is, uh, but we should know, everybody should know about you. So I just, few lines, few more lines, okay. She has also been working with Dalit women and children in the Darvi region of Mumbai since 2016. She has set up a library and has been conducting awareness workshops on women rights, leadership and annihilation of caste. Now, for the last two years, she has been conducting regular workshops, training on uh, violence against women, women rights, um, women leadership among the rural Dalit women around Madras uh, and Madurai. Around Chennai and Madurai. So we are uh, so much privileged to have you, Shalin, here as a speaker. And here I invite uh, Ms. Shalin Maria Lawrence to deliver a lecture on an overview on sexual and gender based violence and caste. Um, yeah, so over to you, Tolar. 
Thank you, Thora. Thanks for your kind words, Thora. Literally, thank you for the opportunity. Also, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, Varakam. Uh, so uh, it's a, it's a pretty tough subject to speak about, actually. So I get calls from almost um, you know magazines and uh, uh, from a different kind of uh, you know uh, political moments or TV channels, and the first thing they they say is like. um comrade we want to we want you to talk on violence on women and we they'll be like very uh, you know happy about it the topic but whenever i hear the topic uh, you know or i speak about the topic it actually takes its toll on me because that's a very hard topic to even discuss about but uh, the reality is um what i understood is like um we are all victims of it because there there are a lot of topics we all you know there is a webinar someone comes and talks about it and it just goes on and on but i just realized that talking on violence of women if there is at least 20 women just 20 women in front of me at least at least 15 of them would have would have uh, you know uh, been victims or survivors of violence on them in one day or the other uh, we, you know i'm not going to say everything is rape i'm not going to say every violence could be rape because uh, there are different types of violence which has to be discussed about the active and passive ones but what i feel is i'm connected to each and every women in india irrespective of my class uh, of my caste class or uh, you know whatever it is uh, my ge- my uh, geopolitics or my, my geography i'm connect- i'm connected to most of the women in this country through something called pain and suffering because every woman in india goes through some sort of violence in her life um maybe once or twice or on a regular basis and we all share the same pain that's that's what i've understood women in india are there's a, there's one indian woman there's not many indian women there, there is one indian woman and she goes through the suffering that's how we are um so basically uh i was having a pretty good life in, in the sense like i didn't realize that i was underprivileged uh, i didn't realize that i came from a slum or i didn't realize that my parents had to take real large debts to get me educated in a school and you know we were in utmost poverty when i was studying in a good school so that is the kind of education which was given to me but i didn't realize once i started working for an it company because i was earning a lot i didn't realize what other women from my own community did not get so i didn't realize any of it i was partying every week and, you know every week i'll be there in any one of the pubs and uh, i was earning uh, i was a um, uh, slave of consumerism uh, buying whatever came in my way and i thought you know what i'm just one lucky person to be alive that's it but what happened to me in 2015 uh, changed my perspective changed everything because 2015 is the time when i real, when there was this uh, chennai flood the chambarambakkam flood disaster which happened and that is the time when we stepped out of our comfort zones to go and do things at north madras area so that is when i went back to my roots so that is when i went back to i you know i, I used to go to my the place where i was born but that is the time i actually went back interior inside that place and i actually thought uh, thought uh, you know it was disastrous uh, there was so much damage in 2015 uh, people didn't have enough food their houses were gone because most of the houses are you know huts and you know um, they were very marginalized people and they were really suffering and what i could see is among the, all the people who were suffering the women were suffering a lot the problems of the women was different and she was having more burdens in, even in a time of a natural disaster than a man because a woman had uh, there were problems of you know uh, using uh, restrooms uh, women did not you know we all were aware of that people asking for sanitary pads and people asking for panties and you know all those things and when we went inside north madras areas we realized that you know women were the ones who were suffering a lot because of this and they were have to they had to nurse their babies feed their babies and the state was not doing anything for them i could literally see it in front of my eyes it was okay for men but it was severe for women that's what uh, the reality is and then um, i started working with north madras women so we actually found out that 
they also go through sexual harassment uh, they were neglected by the state uh, they are, they were unorganized workers uh, since uh, they were um, how, they were they usually work in you know uh, houses they were maids and they kind of work in uh, um the corporation and they were sanitary sanitary workers and everything but they used to, uh, they had issues of you know um for people like the unorganized uh, working women had a uh, employ uh, harassment at workplace and they had nowhere to go to and everything was normalized for them they were said like okay it happens it happens everywhere just just uh, you know uh, just bear with it or that's what it is they, they didn't know they have to go and you know fight against it the so these were the issues and um, uh, they were treated poorly because of their caste uh, uh, background uh, because uh, as i as i would say feminism is about equality but not all women are treated equally in the society so uh, not all women, the privileges and uh, the sufferings are not equal uh, equally it's not equal for every woman it, it is totally different so we have to filter down we have to filter down that uh, you know uh, and uh, we have to go to the bottom of the pyramid because that's where the women are placed to be more precise that's where the dalit bahujan and adivasi women are placed they are placed in the bottom of the pyramid and they are oppressed by the state they are oppressed by the caste dominant people the caste dominant men the caste dominant women and they are also oppressed by their own uh, men so that's how they are suffering like we could literally see that they were not economically independent most of them were earning but they were not economically independent because their husbands or their fathers were controlling their financial part so everybody had an atm card they are they are all working they had a salary so there is no uh, issue about uh, you know women do not have jobs in other mari that is nothing called like women don't have jobs uh 90% of people from north madras are working class women everybody is working there is no need for them to fight to go to go out of their house to work they were free to go at any time they were free go, they were free to go and work anywhere but the, their problems were totally different so their problem was they were financially there but they were not financially independent so earning did not give them the opportunity to control their finances or to make decisions about it. that is one part and another issue was uh, constant uh, uh, the, the drinking habits of men were you know uh, affecting their household and uh, uh, a lot of harassments were happening and they were not allowed to talk about it and there are a lot of things which is happening and more on that they were having caste related uh, you know issues so we started working with them and we found out that all they wanted was like it's not like they were not empowered Uh, to be more precise uh, what i actually experienced from north madras uh, women is like they were all very uh, brave they they don't have anything called this shyness of anything you know they proudly go out at any time and do what they will and stuff like that they were very brave and uh, and uh, they they were real gutsy and even their body language said that they were very gutsy and uh, they could confront anybody you know that is their behavior and i think that is empowerment i do, there's no need for me to go and empower them as that they are already you know made they were made in such a way that they are very strong or to be very uh, honest um, this part of the society which has been oppressed for a long time developed in its skills that could sustain them and one of those is bravery you know that's what i found out one of those is their loud voice be it their loud voice even i talk very loud and uh, i said i said straight i never do like this in front of a man and uh, i i can talk to any man i don't shy away from talking to a man or an officer or a you know a police officer or whatever it's like in a sir in a country this is how we they all talk it's not called indecency it's called being bold and brave and those women are capable of that so what was actually missing from them was that access to resources so the, the resources from the government was there but they could not access those because of the indifference of the government officials and again the caste thing comes out and all those things so uh, there were nobody to guide these people towards the resources so that is the only issue they have 
if given the right opportunity if shown them the right you know this is where you can go and you know you can access those is welfare schemes or whatever that, that would just make those like make their lives pretty easy that's what i guess but nobody wants to do that and that is one transition which happened at that point of time in 2015 and then uh, I, i also started working with the uh, transgender rights uh, association and they were a community based organization and there is another set of women where you see that there is no need for anybody to you know come and save them they have saved themselves already and uh, i learned a lot from them to be confident enough and how to convince or how to be uh, every sort of uh, how to be confident enough in what i have to do what i want to fight for what is right is something which i learned from the transgender community they never give up they never give up they fight very hard they they even they don't need saviors what they need is another access but there is another problem for them was they were also victims to violence because they uh, when they go to work or when they go on a few of them were into uh, sex trade and they were sex sex workers so what happens is there were a lot of violence inflicted of, of, on them when they go for employment or these kind of things so when they go to the police station uh, uh, to file a complaint they are not treated properly or when they go to get their ration card or voter id or even a community certificate they are treated in a very very bad manner and i think that is also violence they they are harassed all the time and that also should be taken into account because when you talk about violence we do not talk violence on women we totally miss transgender or lgbtq community which is something which we have to focus on because i feel you know when we are talking in binary we are talking about you know man and women so man and women and i don't know how is it but to be very frank if you're going to see things through the queer eye for example there is something called they're saying gender is not binary anymore some people are not non binary and some people are saying i'm gender fluid even i'm having problems with my sexuality right now okay what i am i might be this i might be that and you know, we are all ex- exploring those kind of things so when you're going to say i'm non binary and you're going to uh, look at people as you know a gay community or lgbtq i think there is no need for patriarchy patriarchy or you know a male chauvinism to even exist in the first place i think uh, for this uh, difference in this gender parity or whatever it is or this, uh, uh, this the thirst for power would, would actually end when they stop seeing gender as binary as man and woman when they see it as, as a spectrum i think that point patriarchy would actually hit the road that's i think that's how we should focus on things i guess and yes uh, that was a good travel with us and post that uh, the major transformation happened in my life is when i actually went to uh, madurai and i started working with uh, mr kadir so that's when i actually got i, I got introduced to or we, i i started working with victims of caste based because caste based violence is something which i never experienced in uh, chennai uh, because people treat us badly caste discrimination is all, is always there but violence is something which was kind of missing here uh, there were like um, internalized gender based violence which happens but caste based violence was a rarity in chennai so when i went to madurai and south regions of tamil nadu and uh, and i started interacting with uh, women from uh, north uh, districts like arielur and perambur and that's when i actually saw victims of uh, you know i i spoke with victims of caste based violence so i saw how gruesome it was and i i, I saw how how bad it was how horrible it was i i could not handle it like the first day of the session was i terribly cried the whole night i could not handle it it was a blow on my face i just thought you know i am the one who suffered yeah i come from a slum and i toil every day people don't accept me people don't accept my language my tamil is bad my slang is bad oh no the problems of these people in these areas much more worst mine is nothing it's minuscule it's minuscule it's nothing at all so i remember the first person i spoke to this person was a lady 
who worked as a uh, she's from i think some part of islam party or something and she worked as a midday meal preparer in a school she was a dalit woman and uh, the uh, the headmistress actually praised her for her work and gave her some reward it seems the same night uh, the another person another cast uh, a woman from the dominant community who was a coworker um she got very uh, jealous and she got very uh, what to say that she felt very bad because how can a dalit woman be praised and how can she be given a reward so what she did is she went and took hot burning oil so she took the burning oil uh, the very very hot boiling the, the the oil was in boiling temperature and she poured it in the in the face of this dalit woman who was sleeping she poured it on her face like like acid you know acid victims right so instead of acid she didn't have access to acid so she threw it on her face and you should see the face of this woman amount of pain she went and that is was that was the first person i spoke to and you know the only thing is like she is not a criminal uh, she didn't do anything wrong she never boasted about whatever she about her work or the reward she got or whatever the only issue was she was a dalit and she got punished punished for that i think india is the only country where you get punished for being born as whoever you are and i think that is very unjust uh, it, it's very unjust um we've seen uh, race we talk about racism we talk about colonial uh, you know imperialism in different countries and how people have been enslaved and we talk about george floyd and everything but people who acknowledge george floyd's murder people who acknowledge racism i mean people in india who acknowledge those things people who cry their heart out for even the racist atrocities which happens in america even those people turn a blind eye towards the caste atrocities on dalits in india so that is a more i think that is i don't know how to even explain this it's a conundrum i don't know how to explain this in the first place so uh, this is what happens and who gets affected a lot because of caste atrocities is the dalit woman she is the she is at the end of the i don't know how to call it the food chain or she is the end of the pyramid and she is the one who gets um, affected a lot so as as i started interacting with them we all, what i found out is there are a lot of things which happens to dalit women and the worst thing is gang rape which happens to her and uh, then i realized then out of the blue i realized that i i i i read the newspapers and i i watch the news i i i'm an avid news uh, uh, i watch news new news enthusiast and everything but none of the news none of the media media people none of the medians carried these uh, stories to me none of them carried this news of gang rapes which happened to dalit women or making them eat um, fecal matter parading them new nothing was carried to me by my own tamil media by my own tamil news people nothing um so that is something so for me it was like a discovery i've just gone into the labyrinth and i'm just you know i'm just stumbling upon bodies and bodies and bodies so that's what was happening to me so i i realize that people from my own community have been have been treated very very badly they they are suffering on a regular basis on a daily basis they say like every you know every minute a dalit woman is burned every minute a dalit woman is called a witch there is called a witch hunting in the north in north india regions where they go after this dalit woman they call her a witch and they burn them up they feed them fecal matter they parade them new they shave their heads and these kind of things have been done and I, that that is quite that, that is how uh, i couldn't digest it. it it was it was very to think that someone who's born, born in the same community as me but someone who's going through that which i have not gone through it made me realize that feminism is intersectional for example even though she is my same caste i go through less sufferings and she goes through more because she is born in a rural area uh, so there is an uh, class factor also attached to uh, the feminism 
so uh, there is something called we talk about gender violence we gender we talk about um caste but i think there is a need to talk about class uh, thing also when it comes to the violence on women because uh, the the more affected are the more uh, marginalized dalit women so a marginalized dalit marginalized dalit women goes through a lot of uh, uh, pain and suffering than someone who's living in a city so that has to be you know that has to so that has to be you know a talk as uh, spoken about that has to be introspective that's what i think uh the medical facility is what as a dalit woman as what i would get in a city this is not what the same dalit woman would get in a rural area she might be treated badly uh for whenever she goes and meets, meets the doctors because we see dalit women when they go to the phc primary health center they are treated badly a lot of people die when they are go through they when they go through labor because the upper caste doctor says that i cannot treat this dalit woman i cannot touch her so uh, the, the you know the uh, the nurses or the people untrained people you know take care of the labor and most of the dalit women die in in the types of labor and that is another big list and then uh, there is um, they don't they are not treated well they they not they are not given proper treatment and a lot of dalit women die uh, uh, from post delivery complications from postpartum complications and uh, there is uh, there is a lot of things which goes through this and uh, i feel very i don't know i'm i'm having, I'm having a problem talking to people about it because every every time i hear news is on this or every time i'm introduced to a new type of caste atrocity or violence which happens on a dalit women i just relive that through my you know uh, i i relive it through my uh, uh, thought or in my brain i just start you know it it also happened in hatras or whenever i hear that a gang rape ha- has happened and uh, i sit and i just think about it again and again and again and i and as a dalit woman it scares me as a dalit woman i get traumatized and the next day i have some newspaper running to me and say what's your view on that i get highly traumatized after that interview i don't even read those interviews or i don't even look at it after i give those interviews and it's 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 really bad and and then sometimes i become very numb because every day there is a story of rape breaking the spine cutting the tongue you know how dalit women are raped they're not just you know rapes are people might say a rape is a rape rape is a rape every rape is cruel gruesome it should not happen to any woman it should not happen to any man also it should not happen to people of any um, community or caste or class or whatever i'm saying no harassment is harassment no it should not happen to anyone but when it happens to dalit women the mode in which it it's, it's been carried out systematically they do that in a very cruel gruesome horrific manner so that they want other dalit women to look at it to see that to experience that and go inside their shells do not come out in public do not talk against a man do not talk against um a dominant man or that's what they are that's the message they are sending that's the message they are sending i've already spoken about this any time a woman is raped uh, be it that uh, ready doctor there was the one doctor who was raped and murdered in uh, uh, hyderabad two years back the whole country was talking about it but there was no image of her uh, there was no uh, actual names are not given out so the image of the accused flashes on the television screens and all this but when a dalit woman is murdered the media intentionally or i don't know how this whole thing happened the media puts out the name from the name to the family details and uh, they actually uh, puts out uh, they put out uh, the murdered bodies you remember the two sisters who hung from the tree i the, the image is still haunting me the image is still haunting me 
and they didn't even uh, you know uh, they didn't even give a warning or anything when a dalit woman dies her even her body has no rights but human rights says that every victim has even the victims have a right you're not supposed to tell their name you're not supposed to display their body photographs nothing but when a dalit woman or a adivasi woman dies their adiyam irrespective of how horrific can how bleeding their bodies they have been heads cut off hand cut off they just show the image on the screen so that they want to scare women they want to scare other women it happens they they do succeed in that a lot of women get scared they don't want to go for their higher studies they don't want to go out of their house they don't want to do anything even i get scared i get that's what i said i get very numb when i read the news every day sometimes what all i want to do is just sit and not talk about it not talk about it at all because i'm scared let me at least feel the suffering for a day and maybe let me write about it later but you, you know what happens in that time at that time there are social media warriors men who come and ah shalin you're a feminist no why are you not talking about this dalit murder which happened why are you not talking about this rape i let me breathe for a second let me breathe for a second let me console myself for a second before talking about it but they come and tell me you have to talk no you are questioning us you are questioning men no now talk about this you are questioning about tamil nadu men no talk about this uttar pradesh violence dude like you know this kind of attitude you know it it puts the dalit women like every time something happens they have to rush and they have to give a statement about it. don't you think this is violence don't you think this is violent on their mental state this is also violence but nobody talks about it. and people don't talk about much also because i've seen i really don't want to differentiate between women because for me feminism is for all feminism is uh, i'm not going to say feminism is brahmanism no feminism is ambedkarism so ambedkar uh you know laid out the rules for women he spoke about the anti hindu uh, laws and all those things. so this laws are for everybody uh the same thing is for me for me uh, i'm going to be uh, i'm going to treat my upper caste friend or a, uh, everybody equally i don't want to treat anyone differently yeah? so, but civil society does not treat women that way so when a dominant caste woman dies and there is news everywhere the accused are caught immediately and uh people just uh, you know what happened in delhi bus uh, case you know uh, it was very unfortunate for whatever happened to her and for nirbhaya but people go on candle marches and you know all those things and there's a whole uproar for roar across the country so what happens is when a dalit woman you know gets affected the same way because statistics say the national crimes record bureau says out of all the gang rapes 90% of the gang rapes which happen in india happen on dalit women excuse me so 90% of gang rape gross and rapes happen on dalit women so the same kind of rapes severe rapes happen on dalit women too but when they happen the media does not talk about it but even when media talks about it nobody goes on candle matches i expect the same i expect the same to what happened to nirmaya i expect the same kind of national emotion to be to be evoked when it happens to the other women when it happens in tamil nadu in dharmapuri but that does not happen people are so indifferent so i don't understand as a dalit woman i voice for every right i voice for lgbtq i voice for human rights i voice for land rights i voice for feminism i voice for equal rights for all women because that's what that's what equality means for me right but when something happens to me if something is going to happen to me also i know only a certain group of people for example from my own community or the minority community is going to cry for me i'm no, i'm i'm sure nobody else is going to talk for me so that's what it is that's how that's how it is a country turns blind and they turn deaf they they don't want to they go uh, speechless when it, when the violence happens on dalit women then again the statistic says a large number of violence in india happens on dalit women 
that's why you have to talk feminism that's why you have to talk about a lot of things but people don't talk about it. and that pains me and uh, when swati was murdered and swati was murdered uh, in nungambakkam in tamil nadu swati was murdered in daylight in a place called nungambakkam in a railway station i think for almost one year everybody were talking about it and uh, a lot of people were running to her house a lot of politicians were going to her house they were giving her compensation this that everything and she was from an upper caste i really condemn her murder but the same thing when happened to rajalakshmi you know rajalakshmi was killed by a caste dominant man because rajalakshmi was uh, he sexually um, you know approached her she said no so he went to her house and he cut her head off the criminal that's what happened but nobody spoke about it even none of these politicians spoke about it condemned it except for you know vck and trimavalaman or some dalit parties nobody spoke about it. and then we all went on a rally we stopped we stood on the road we shouted slogans we we carried the placards and everything and we we shouted a lot and then two other two other politicians came and gave a you know statement on twitter and facebook and nothing else happened nobody went her house nobody visited her just because she said dalit woman it happens it happens because we contribute to around 20% of the old bank in chennai i mean our population is 20% in tamil nadu but even that does not you know uh, make that does not uh, allude them or it does not uh, give them a reason to support us okay even if not for humanity at least for the votes we give them you know the parties the, the biggest parties here in uh, tamil nadu to support us at least for the votes but they don't even do that but they do a lot of appeasing when it comes to the violent dominant community but when it comes to the non violent disciplined victimized uh, people violent uh, violent you know violence uh, what to say people who are affected by a lot of violence the scheduled caste these parties does not bat an eye they do not do anything so that that is also there so i don't want to give an explanation on why violence happens and all those because i've spoken about it in a lot of them because, because people think that you know uh, patriarchy is the reason that violence happens yes patriarchy is one of the reasons that violence happens but the other reason in india because we have to dr- drill through india we can't be seeing everything in a global eye the global eye right so when it comes to india patriarchy is not the only reason caste is the major reason for this violence so for any man uh, who is who belongs to a dominant caste he thinks you know it's easier for him to take hold of a woman's body or to dominate a woman from a lower caste than a man to prove that to prove his caste pride uh, they think that women are the major um, uh, for example how to say, for example yeah two men are there right so they, they, in a road i mean there are like two men are driving their vehicles and they just have an accident so one goes and dashes in the car of the other person they come out and they fight but do they talk about themselves no they talk about their sisters and their mothers right they are the people who committed the accident two men but when they fight they talk about the women in their houses teri ma teri behan teri this tera nani you know this is how they fight so they think i there's no need for me to attack this man no i there's no need for me to attack this man what i'll do is i'll attack his family women because the pride of the family lies with the woman huh the pride of the family lies with the woman so if i if in rest i could have slammed this man and Go, uh, you know uh, put an end to it but i will talk ill about this woman his, his parents his mother his daughter so that you know that's how i I'll, i'll take my vengeance on him this is how patriarchy works likewise a patriarchal caste dominant man thinks that 
he can uh, show his power or dominance on the body of a lower caste woman to prove to shame the caste to to shame the lower caste man so i said now see i caste your woman i can do anything to her you are helpless you can't do anything you know that is my caste pride right? you can't do anything you remember in hatras uh, when this woman and this um, child went to you know get this uh, went to work in the field and she was uh, raped and murdered and everything the whole village was supporting this guy who the guys who done the act the reason being they belong to the upper caste now we spoke about how uh, uh, this whole manu dharma manu nidhi thing was doing the rounds last year right and there was this uh, whole controversy of mr tirumavalavan on his remarks on manu nidhi came up so that is the time we all went and read what is there in manu nidhi and so what manu nidhi says or what manu shastra says is um so if a woman um, if a man from the lower caste uh, even if he falls in love with the upper caste woman he should be killed and if a upper caste man if he goes and defiles as the word uses defiles or sexually even if he sexually engages with a lower caste woman he should only pay a fine of 1 anna that is that is not even in existent today he can pay a fine and he can just come out of so the whole north india uh, even here uh, the villages uh, they the, 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 the what to say the whole legal matters of the villages are handled by the tap panchayats or the panchayats so they all work under this uh, you know ruling of the manushastra the manushastra is not a handbook they carry but it's a it's a it's a guidance which they carry in their head through the religion and through the religion and caste things which has been passed on to them as in the name of culture human rights should be the culture human rights should be the culture not caste and religion but caste and anti human uh, traditions have been passed on as culture to to india to the indian men for the last 3000 years and that's how they cannot easily come out of it so the problem lies in religion and caste so what happens is the caste panchayats they they this is a tradition so when an upper caste man uh, you know uh, touched this uh, molested or raped this uh, woman from a lower caste it was easier for them to pardon that man because that's what their religion says because that's what the religious text says so they just find him and just let they let him off and this is the kind of um, you know uh, privilege a, a person from the dominant caste enjoys in each and every village across india so i'm not going to say you know this is what uh, uttar pradesh is about i'm not going to be uh, you know uh, i am a dravidian supporter uh, i am going to talk about uh, I, i have uh, advantage from the thing called dravidian parties but also uh caste is also a major problem in tamil nadu so i'm not going to say okay uttar pradesh this is this is only happens in uttar pradesh or this only happens in madhya pradesh or bihar i've gone to tamil nadu i've gone to the nook and corner i've seen how women suffer and this is also a normalized behavior a caste privilege enjoyed by a dominant man in tamil nadu and it happens a lot and what is the reason they go on doing it is because of the impunity factor they have the caste privilege the whole village supports them the whole panchayat supports them also the police the state when i say state is against the dalit women i mean whenever a dalit woman goes and gives a complaint at a police station there you you can see gender comes to because there is a patriarchal police officer who is sitting there and he is also from the most of the police station have a dominant caste police officer sitting there who does not register any of the case of dalit rapes or violence on dalit women it, what happens what happens in turn is they insult the woman they say you are too ugly no you think that upper caste man will come and touch you or you are too dirty no you belong to this caste they don't even come and drink water from your uh, homes yeah they will come and uh, you know rape you is it this is the kind of a uh, reply given to given to the women victims survivors who come to the police station to file a complaint 
uh, Arialur Nandini, she was missing for almost two days. Uh, her parents went to the police station and they gave a complaint. They said, you know, my daughter uh, is, is missing. Uh, someone might, might have kidnapped her. You know, what, what the police officer said is, he said, uh, go home. You know, uh, she, you, you think she's Aishwarya Rai? She looks very ugly, you know. Who would even uh, uh, kidnap her? That is the answer, uh, that is the response they got from the police station. And the police did not act. And I think within those two days, uh, Nandani was uh, brutally uh, raped. The, the, the fetus was taken out. She was pregnant. So the fetus was taken out from her womb. A uterus was cut and she died. And her body was recovered after three days from a, a, a well. Imagine the police officer has acted and said, oh, I'll take your company. I'll go in search of her. Things would have been different. But that's, what, that's where uh, the problems of the Dalits start. So yeah after the crime even if they go to report it the crimes are not you know uh, recorded so they get insulted they get chased away or they have counter affairs filed on them 65 percent of the time 65 percent of the time when they go uh, how do i put it so whenever they go to give a complaint a counter affair is filed on the victims a counter affair is filed on the relatives of the survivors and this happens 65% in Tamil Nadu. 65% of the counter FAS, you know, uh, this is what happens. Nobody talks about it. And po the police is highly indifferent. They neglect the cases. They take bribe from the dominant caste and they help them. This is one of the reasons that the dominant men think that even if they do these kind of things, they'll be, they'll be you know, spared. Nobody can do anything to me, no. I belong to such caste. The police is my friend. The government is my friend. And nobody's going to do anything about me. So he's not punished. Most of the cases, Dalit women, violence on Dalit women, most of the cases have, uh, you know, the conviction rate is very, very less. First of all, the case is not filed. Or even if it's filed, it does not go to jurisdiction. Even if it goes to jurisdiction, uh, the conviction does not happen. The, the SCST uh, Act of 2015 says that every uh, district, every district should have one special court uh, for taking care of Dalit atrocity cases. But in Tamil Nadu, out of I think we have uh, 36 districts. I don't know how, how many districts have been uh, right now, but only seven courts are there. Only seven special courts are there. So who's the perpetuator? The perpetuator of is the uh, state the state does not want to convict the people from the dominant community if the state had concern for dalit women they would have put up special courts in each and every district at least we should have 20 courts right at least we should have 50 percent of the courts but we only have six or seven courts why because the state does not care the state wants us to suffer the states want to enable dominant caste man the state wants him to feel safe so the state is a co-perpetuator the state vigilance committee looking on the discrimination of caste violence or on dalits is supposed to be held every six months but for the last 30 years only three meetings have happened every six months you're supposed to have a meeting so annually two meetings in 30 years we should have had around 60 meetings but we had only three meetings because the state vigilance committee would be headed by the chief minister and the chief minister under him there will be 25 IAS officer who will be taking care of this so the state does not care about the Dalit women or Dalits state does not care about violence on women that, that's how it is. So the state is, I'm, I'm reiterating it, the state is a co-perpetuator. So this is a bigger fight. This fight is not just with the, you know, I'm not just fighting with a caste dominant man or caste dominant woman. I'm fighting with the police force. I'm fighting with the judiciary. I'm also fighting with the judiciary and I'm also fighting with the state. Dalit women is fighting such, you know, threefold fights. And even before that, she has to have her own fights at home. 
there are domestic violence, cases of domestic sexual assaults. Women are not allowed, rural Dalit women are not allowed to do things on their own, to go for their higher studies or to earn, to go for a job. So there is this internal patriarchy which she has to fight. And it will take thousands of years for her to fight that in the first place. They are married earlier. They are married earlier because their men think if they send her out, she might be a victim to another violence. She might get raped, you know, at any age. A Dalit woman can, can get raped at any age. I actually went, there was this victims, um, I met with few victims from, of domestic, uh, of sexual violence in uh, a village near Payani. So this person said his daughter was sexually harassed. His six-year-old daughter was sexually harassed by a dominant caste man who's the landowner where he resides. And that case took a very long time because uh, again, a counter FIR was filed on the father and all this. And then the person told me that, you know, this is a very uh, normal, you know, this, is, this happens regularly. Almost, uh, they belong to the Arundhati community. And he said, almost, most of the children or most, uh, most of the women from the Arundhati community have gone through sexual harassment in that village. And I said, for how long? He said, for almost 40 years. So almost 40, 50 years. As he remembers, that or that they all know that every woman in that household, in, in that village, every woman in that in the village has been sexually abused, harassed, starting from a very young age. This is very systematic. This is not a random act of violence. Now, when I hear this, I want to put an end to it. Don't you think? government would not know this happens? Do you think the collectors, the DSPs, the IAS officers who are responsible to take care of the, that place, they, they don't hear about this? They would surely hear about it. They are surely aware of these kind of things. But they don't want to act upon it because they want this community to suffer. The more you suffer, the more you deal with violence, the less you will talk about your rights. It's human psyche, right? So they think, let them fight with their demons, caste or violence or whatever. Once they start, once they, you know, they get so involved in the judicial process, police process, medical process, that the, the, the fight for their lives to be alive, you know, whatever it is. Once they do this, they will not talk about any rights. They will talk. They will not talk about women's representation in politics. They will not talk about women's representation in the panjayat. They will not talk about women's rights. They will not talk about anything. This is the kind of... Uh, this is the intention with which these things are not dealt with in the first place. This is the priority intention. So people think gory, horrorful, you know, violence on women happens only in Uttar Pradesh. What I'm saying is, no, it happens in Tamil Nadu. You know, when it happens, when a woman goes to defecate, toilet is the problem. You know, the toilet, there is no, there are no proper toilets. Adivasi women, they don't, near Dharmaburi did not have proper toilets. So this, this woman, in the V hours in the morning, she went to, uh, defecate herself in the field where she was raped and she was murdered. So where is your switch parat or whatever it is? Nothing, nothing happens. You think the government does not know that they have problems accessing the resources? Most of the Dalits or Adivasis are placed at the far end of the village right far end of the village so it takes them a great deal of distance 
to travel to come to access school college or hospital right or even ration they have to travel a long way say 20 kilometers 10 kilometers this is where violence happens this is where they are confronted by the other caste men dominant caste men and this is where acids thrown on their face this is where they are paraded naked this is where they are you know raped this is where it happens when the dalit women are in their journey to access their resources this is where violence happens so this is the main thing so so this is like a two way punishment for us one is not we are not benefited from the schemes we are kept away from it or if we even brave to go there we are killed or we are assaulted and this is horrible to think this is horrible to think so when the whole world is talking about feminism fourth wave feminism my body my rules we are talking about you know you know we are talking about uh, a lot of things we are talking about sexual independence uh, we are talking about sex toys we are talking about um, you know showing off a sanitary pads uh, in the tv and becoming very woke about it and we are talking about our sex lives on facebook and they say oh you know what i am very woke this this feminism what is feminism yes i'm not saying it is not feminism but what i'm saying is there are serious issues out there which needs more attention which needs more time in the media showing your sanitary pad might be feminism for you to be not to be killed while going to the bathroom or to go into the field to defecate to not to be killed is our feminism not to be raped we are asking not to be raped a dalit woman is asking not to be raped that is her feminism when women are talking about having polyamory and you know this that everything that is good that is not bad i'm not judging you on that but you're prioritizing it as feminism while an actual a dalit woman is fighting not to be killed struggling on a regular basis on not to be killed she just wants to go to the hospital or she was just wants to go to the school there are two different worlds for women in india the privileged upper caste women have a different world and the dalit bahujan adivasi women women have a different world it's totally different what i'm saying is i think those women who are out there you know they have their pr going they have their voices heard especially people like me or even someone who's from a privileged you know thing i want them to talk about these issues more these are the issues to be spoken about that's what i say this is the priority that's what i'm telling you uh, somebody raised a question that question i want to address that question sujata okay i read the question sure. uh, what shalin is before that there is another question so do you want ah to... sure okay we can start with the question abe okay. Okay. okay so there is a person busaina she asked how do you manage to deal with the empathy fatigue after constantly having to work with issues of violence and discrimination that's what i spoke about in my uh, starting uh, this in the session started because it gets to your head it gets to your head it's uh, um you get tired of explaining what is the what is the different types of violence i mean this is not the actual session what i do what i go and take in a you know violence class because i list out the number of violences i i list down when it happens the regularities what is the mode how it happens how it how it is been dealt with the police on judiciary and all those things. and it, it it actually gets to me and uh, i feel it it you know it stays on to me for almost uh, you know 
a week or two and it, 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 it gets to your head. You, you know, you really can't uh, live in peace after that. You're, you're in constant conflict within yourself. You can't even have a proper meal. That's what it, it, that's what it, it does to you. It, it, it's not like the fatigue goes off. It stays with you. It becomes a, you know, it, it becomes a lifestyle. to deal with violence for example i'll tell you something this is the type of violence in real life what i've seen that is another type of violence what i want to speak but i was talking uh, feminism and i was talking politics and social media uh, people were uh, cheering me and a lot of leftists were you know really talking good about me and uh, they were motivating me and stuff. but the day on uh, the day uh, from which i started speaking about dalit women rights or dalit rights and you know violence on dalits and stuff that was a time when i've seen the real face of these men who, who you know who were in social media because uh, they would go ahead and say uh, she is this particular caste we can go ahead and kill her she deserves no mercy we should rape her gruesomely every day for almost 3 years people talk about raping me people talk about killing me and every time when they do it they also add this caste suffix of it. you know there is this uh, caste um, derogatory term which is which it applies to my caste and they typically use it in front of my name and they say you know she needs to be killed she needs to be raped and they also describe the way with which they would rape and you know i'm i'm a christian convert so i do not have the pcr and scst act for me right does not apply for me so this person says uh, one of the person it was very interesting comment and this person belonged to a leftist party and this person is saying even if we rape her no uh, she can't go and file the scst case you know she because she's a christian convert she can't even file a scst case this is what this is this is the comment which i got so it's not about just speaking for others it's, it's about me also even i am now a part of this process so uh, i get this rape threats every day and this is one form of violence which actually uh, you know damages you here and it really takes a toll on your health mental health and everything but uh, looking at the bigger picture to be the voice of uh, the women who really uh, you know want to, uh, to to be a voice of a community matters to me a lot than the physical or um, uh, mental stress i go through because of this process if i don't voice out maybe tomorrow i i might be also a victim i am a victim and i might get killed in this process i am a dalit woman so i am a woman in this country it is either feticide or infanticide or acid attack or etc attack or dowry thing i might get in in a country like india from the day, day i was born to the day i am going to be dead i am going to be harassed and there is a chance of violence to me as a woman there is a chance of violence to me any part of me so being political or being active at least is going to save me from that so that is the one thing which i came into a uh, came um, into a uh, a uh, 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 understanding about so it's better to talk and die than to not talk and to suffer yes okay thank you shalin uh, yeah. and uh, there is uh, shujata modi so i think it's not a question but then it's a thanks busena i actually yeah. want to talk about that yeah what shalin saying is true that caste discrimination is and oppression is systematic and the basic cause for violence against dalit women uh, the legal system uh, the law enforcement the dominant communities are all in cahoots to prevent uh, justice yeah rightly said you start from the police station you have the dominant caste men from judiciary dominant caste is present everywhere that's what i'm saying even the judges you've seen what happened to the uh, rape cases uh, the the verdict state right? uh, uh, the honorable mr bobde or the honorable uh, pushpa from maharashtra or whatever uh, verdict they given you've seen the state of the, those verdicts I, i really don't know what goes through their mind in the first place so i think proper representation in judiciary is a major problem so judiciary does not have representation so that is also one of the issues so and even the state there are like dominant caste in tamil nadu there are two dominant castes and those are the people who act as a power center 
and the government also aids them it emancipates them so th- th- that is also there so we have two chief ministers and these two chief ministers act as the power center for these two dominant castes so these are the two dominant castes which actually uh, go and do a lot of honor killings and you know a lot of uh, caste based crimes and that's the reason we cannot question them or take any action on them so from the um, polis to judiciary to the state caste the representation and the distribution of that particular caste is is a major problem that is right yes i have a question yeah uh, shalin uh, my question is more to challenge myself and to you it's not to yeah so i'm saying that there is violence of course what you're saying about the dalit women and but i'm going i'm taking a little i'm trying to say that you know this violence you're talking of also oppresses the most backward community it also uh, oppresses a lot of uh, other um, upper caste maybe they are not the upper upper caste or the very well to do but yes there are among them the bc community the mbc community and so on from the working classes they also suffer a lot of threat rape um, oppression and often they are not even able to you know voice it or, or you know even seek any form of justice in many cases i find that actually the families of these victims actually throw them out of the family they don't even uh, stand by them and so um they also i mean my experience they've also found it extremely difficult to prove these uh instances of violence because uh often they have no uh, proof of that uh at the, at the point because they have not reported it in time and so on uh so what the state is uh of course it's anti dalit is no no point but it is also an anti women state it's a extremely patriarchal setup where violence against women is absolutely accepted and how is it possible that you know uh we see um coming together of feminisms whether they are dalit feminism or the the traditional feminist uh, movements do we see that there's any overlap is there anything that we can do to fight these together or or uh, uh what kind of effort should we make to come on the same plane and the same you know understanding these are certain questions i mean what you're saying is very true those who who sympathize with black lives they do not look at race they do not look at caste question and so on but how do we bridge these gaps at least in the among feminists yeah you raised a good point that state is actually against women also state is patriarchal that is right but uh, the, the 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 severity with which as the state is anti women also changes uh, according to the uh, community as far as what i would address and also the, the rape which you said right um uh, for example uh, but fortunately uh, the rape survivors from the rural tamil nadu what i've seen is the family supports them a lot the family supports them a lot uh, i don't know what happens when it, the when the class uh, changes because Uh, even couple of days back uh, there was a 2 year old kid uh, a girl child was uh, raped and the mother fought for almost uh, you know 24 hours to file a case against the perpetrators and uh, what i've seen in the rural villages of tamil nadu and the rural areas of throughout india is the people from the marginalized communities do not do not uh, let go of their uh, women uh, after a particular crime has happened on them they hold them very tightly very strongly so they they never uh, leave them alone they fight for justice together uh, you seen what happened in unnav also the unnav rape case the whole family was victimized and 
and i think that is one of the special thing about rural india or the marginalized community is uh, they always stand by their the survivor and uh, i think certain uh, certain classes have to really uh, learn from them uh, you know on how to treat their women the same way and uh, another thing what you said is uh, india every woman you know has the risk of as i said every woman has a risk of living in this country so we will be assaulted called names killed raped and oppressed that's how it is and that's why i also said that when dr ambedkar brought the hindu code bill he brought it for every woman every woman of all class caste and uh, uh but the, the even the laws are equal for everybody but the way in which they have they implement the laws uh differ so the judiciary functions uh differently for the upper caste and when and also uh when the convicted or the accused person comes from a certain um caste for example if the accused uh the, the person who, uh, who who has perpetrated the crime is from a lower caste um the system works very fast in convicting them and that is uh, data which is available and uh, when it comes to upper caste men doing the same kind of crime they are red go so that is one thing which is there. for example you seen banwari devi case right in 1992 when she was raped by a group of men uh, the court said that these men belong to the upper caste and they cannot even think about touching a lower caste and they just let them go and that was a very long fight what she had and they also said just because she's an older lady and they were teen boys they cannot have raped her so these kind of stupid or illogical unreasonable you know excuses are given by the court when the perpetrator of the crime is uh, belongs to the upper caste so this makes the upper caste man or the dominant caste man to be um, to uh, to enjoy the impunity so he enjoys it and he has all the access to go and repeat the crime again and again on the dalit women so that's how we should look at the rates of dalit women when compared to compared to the sexual assault on um, other women and there is also another data data matters because i'm not just giving numbers but it says of all the rapes which happen in india only 6% are gang rapes only 6% are gang rape and in that 6% 90% happens on dalit bahujan adivasi you got the point right so uh, this systematic gruesome gang rapes happen so there is a way of approach itself so it's not just doesn't happen because a man is frustrated and he wants to take a sexual frustration on a woman it is like pe aisa hi karunga kuch कोई भी कुछ भी नहीं कर सकता हमारे ऊपर यू नो आई एम मैं आई बिलोंग टू दिस जात एंड नोबडी कैन डू दिस टू मी एंड आई एम अ मैन एंड इट मोस्टली कम्स फ्रॉम देयर कास्ट प्रिविलेज एंड अपब्रिंगिंग सो इट एक्चुअली अफेक्ट्स हाउ दलित मेन वुमेन आर यू नो डेल्ट बाय द पंचायत्स एंड बाय द ज्यूडिशियरी यू नो सो देयर इज एक्चुअली अ वेरी बिग डिफरेंस अह शुड दैट एंड देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ actually sujata there is a lot of data as you said there is a lot of data and when you see the data the whole picture changes about women raped in india and then when you see the data you will talk about dalit women raped in india and you know uh, those kind of things and uh, yes um, we have to put forth these kind of uh, uh, revelations data wise into mainstream media a lot of people should talk about it I've done three podcasts on rapes in the month of February. Ah, uh, the month of February, and I felt sick after that. It was three podcasts on sexual harassment, and after the three podcasts, I actually felt sick because uh, it's very cruel. I think that's why men want to do it on women. You know, they that is the best punishment they can give a woman because she can't even think about it. She can't even talk about it, and she will feel very ashamed to talk about it or you know. um look at the psychology right look at the psychology imagine i am talking about rape it's hard for me itself imagine a rape victim or a rape sub- survivor repeating the story again and again and again 
to a court in the courtroom or you know in the in a inquiry committee or to the police they they just weaken them then you know it's, it's not like they want the body it's the best form of punishment tool they have in hand because women can't even you know repeat it again they can't narrate the incident it's better we do this oh my god these men these men the motive is uh excuse me i'm mangay can i just add something challen yeah sure sure mangay hi um, thank you so much i'm sorry i can't switch on the video i'm on the phone okay um i mean i think uh, a shalin's presentation has really fleshed out a uh, lot of intersectionalities you know i mean right from state down to organizations the so called progressive organizations and the women's groups themselves you know so thank you for that shalin you know it's like um, it's important for us to talk openly and clearly without a sense of um, targeting anybody or attacking anybody but i just wanted to touch on sujatha's uh, thing along with whatever you had said you know the fact that when you are talking generally about sexual violence or violence against women invariably we are talking about more than 80% of violence against dalit women so that part uh, as you said is proven for by statistics and everything i think uh, but then how do we then build the feminist solidarities you know how are we going to really um kind of address these things probably question ourselves about uh, why is it that when there is a critique from dalit feminists all the um, you know, feminists who think they are not dalits really kind of you know get defensive and i i i'm uh, i mean I, i'm not saying that you know i uh, there are no problems at all in dalit feminist angle we need to address that as well but i'm just thinking we we have to really think of a feminist solidarity which is uh, based on uh, a level of em- empathy which we haven't put a word to you know i i i don't think even the word maitri which of course ambedkar uses uh, even that doesn't capture you know the level of empathy that a woman uh, re- re- needs in order to have a feminist understanding of uh, being a dalit being um, from a working class probably being a la- i think uh, what shalin really uh, insisted upon and began with the access i think that becomes crucial so even though the violence is meted out to all women the access to legal resources the access to support systems the access to policy makers and uh, just the whole fight for judicial uh, some kind of justice that one is really looking forward to is much more prolonged much more uh, difficult in the case of the people who are oppressed in the uh, and we need to kind of rig- not just recognize it but articulate it. you know we we need to really articulate it specifically and then really flesh out and see what what are these distinctive features which need to be underlined um which is what i think uh, feminist solidarity is about and it it's not going to be easy because we may belong to women's groups we may belong like like shalin said we may belong to progressive groups but we are all blinded by various uh default way of thinking of the society including caste and patriarchy even though we may think we are progressive liberated women thank you thank you thanks thank you lot yeah and yeah uh, as i said that's why we said now i was a dalit i i used to call myself a dalit woman and then again i went down and said intersectional feminism so i am going to include each and everything which is being you know Uh, which falls out of that circle it it can be um, uh, as i said uh, if if the queer woman is you know within that uh, um circle who's going to get affected i'm going to talk for her or if it's going to be a working class 
uh, women uh, from the uh, you know even that has to be addressed and class also has to be addressed along with that so that is one thing which uh, i've experienced i've seen so there are certain privileges that i enjoy uh, even though i'm a part of you know uh, the dalit community so some, someone might not enjoy that so we, we really have to look at other criteria so intersectional feminism is to be the talk of the hour and uh, we all have to come together that's so it we uh, as sujata said how we're going to do this i believe in women's solidarity i believe in you know everybody coming together everybody talking for the priorities the severe the severe topics as i said it's like right now dalit feminism or the violence on dalit women it's like it is like you know it's like a brain surgery let's talk about that first the other rights of women might be like uh, you know small infections in the body which can be you know uh, attended but uh, i got hurt in the brain i got got hit in the head so put me into the trauma room first i need the trauma room or the emergency room first so give me the help first and other things can be attended also you know along this that's what i say but um, i think we have to have more uh, dialogues on why we need intersectional feminism and uh, how should we prioritize certain needs before you know certain rights and stuff like that so i think prajanya's session is one of those ways one of the ways th- through which uh, we could communicate to at least to a control group from here it will travel to another space i think these kind of dialogues or panel discussions with a inclusive group that is what is more important i believe in inclusive group meetings i do not believe in believe in exclusive place where i sit with 10 women from the you know same uh, demographics and talk about the same stuff most on the moment i'm going to have a dominant class women five women yes i'm going to have a dalit women or lgbt women or who it is everybody come together everybody talk together everybody find a solution together otherwise i will not accept the fact you nicely put it shalin <laughs> like you know the women solidarity is the need of the hour and everybody has to talk about and have a dialogue and come to the conclusion that's why i don't go to that's why i, I don't belong I, I, i am not part of any groups or any parties so people call me to talk about this and every party so i go to communist i talk about it i go to idwa or i go to i write this in kumudam so i'm you know my next article in kumudam is going to talk about dalit feminism and intersectionality so i think that is one of the advantages of being alone i guess not having a tag maybe <laughs> but that that also doesn't give me any kind of support i don't get any support. that, that is, is one disadvantage there is another question you uh, to you shalin anuradha yeah. kanapati she asked i wonder if it is even possible to call yourself a feminist without being anti caste in an indian context i think that has to be a starting point obviously we're going to you have to talk about annihilation of caste you're going to talk all yourself uh because uh, what we say is it's uh, brahmanical patriarchy patriarchy that's what you're fighting against so caste in india uh, or uh, sorry domination or patriarchy in india comes from caste it arises from the religious text so it has to be dealt so you have to deal with caste to deal with patriarchy so even certain women uh, certain women are they are victims of internalized misogyny and patriarchy right so even that has to be dealt with so how do you deal with it so you have to deal with caste so her question is the answer so in respect we have to deal with caste we have to talk about annihilation of caste only then maybe we can call ourselves feminists in a very uh, decent way right? but if you are going to talk about caste and what is the there is no point in that there's no point in that uh this is very great uh, <clears throat> to talk with you shalin it's very powerful and the discussion was also very productive i guess um so anybody having the last question to ask uh, shalin yes okay 
so um thank you so so much shalin uh, for your uh, powerful talk and uh, we learn a lot from your talk as well and it is great to hear you here have you here and hear you listen to you uh, thank you so much uh, thank you so much uh, sudhari thodar and uh, swarna also for the wonderful opportunity so these kind of dialogue should happen uh, people and i really love the way you promoted this talk and uh, that's what should happen because we need promotion we need a good marketing marketing team to get these talks to you know the social media platform because the more the word spreads the more it reaches the people so i really appreciate the team's efforts and uh, the lovely uh, inclusiveness of your uh, you know, <laughs> uh, panel and your thought process in the first place thank you so much and uh, thanks to the audience also yeah thank you so much thank you so much everybody uh, for being here being with us and um, our next uh, uh, next lecture of this series is on friday next friday 30th april and the uh, speaker is um, samalar jabaraj and uh, it is going to be in tamil it is on about uh, the um, dalit women history um and it's a journey towards uh, the gender justice so please uh, yes there are uh, recording available previous sessions record available um it is uh, available in our youtube yes it is available it is there up in the air i think yeah so thank you so much for everybody